All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. It is 7 p.m. and I'd like to call this meeting to order while this meeting is being held. I think we've got some feedback. Try that one. Um, while this meeting is being held in person in consideration of ongoing COVID-19 health concerns, we are also offering the option for the public to participate through Zoom if preferred. Instructions on how to participate virtually are included in the city council calendar item listed on the front page of missionks.org. Please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Robin, please call the roll. Bolton House? Here. Josie? Here. Thomas? Here. Pring? Here. Davis? Here. Inman? Here. Loudon? Here. Ryard? Here. All right, we do not have any public hearings this evening, so we will move on to our special print presentations. However, we also do not have any special presentations tonight. So we'll move on to issuance of notes and bonds, which we also do not have any <laughs> options related to the issuance of notes or bonds this evening. So we'll jump into our consent agenda. Our consent agenda has five items tonight. Our council committees met on August 3rd and fully discussed each of these items. The committees agreed that the items listed on our consent agenda are routine enough to be considered under a single motion. If a council member or a member of the public would like an item removed from the consent agenda, they may request that at this time. If not, I would entertain a motion to approve. Mayor, I move the city council adopt the consent agenda as printed items 4A through 4E. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Bolting House? Aye. Chosie? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Kring? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. All right, next is public comments. If any members of the public would like to make a comment on items that are not included on our agenda this evening, now would be the time. If you're participating through Zoom, please either add your comment in the chat feature and it will be read out loud or note that you would like to speak and we will call on you shortly to make your comment verbally. Please remember your comments or questions are visible to everyone in the meeting. If you are part of our in-person group tonight, please raise your hand, but stay seated. We will call on you to come to the lectern to make your comments. When you make your comment, please state your name and city of residence for the record. Also be conscientious of others trying to speak and speak slowly and clearly. If I need to confirm something that may have been difficult to hear, I will ask for clarification. All right, no online comments and not seeing any hands. So we will move into our items from the Planning Commission. We have two items coming forward from the Planning Commission tonight. The first is consideration of a preliminary development plan for the construction of the new Rushton Elementary School and approval of the preliminary and final plat of Rushton Elementary School and acceptance of right away. Um, let's see, Carrie, you doing the report? Yes. All right. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so first up is case 2217, the Russian Elementary Preliminary Development Plan. The subject property is located at 52nd Street between Lamar and Woodson. It's the current location of Russian Elementary, which was built in 1954. Existing structure is, a one, is one story on a seven acre parcel and the school district owns the adjoining one and a half acre parcel to the Southeast directly behind the school. The subject property and surrounding properties are zoned R1 and RP1, single family residential, and Waterworks Park is adjacent to the Southeast. Due to the age of the existing school building, the school district proposes demolition of the one story structure, which will be replaced by a combination one and two stories. The school will serve kindergarten through sixth grade and in individual classrooms with shared collaborative spaces. There will also be two store, a two story media center or library with floor to ceiling windows facing southeast, fitted with sunshades, a, a cafeteria with kitchen, gymnasium with storm shelter, art room, music room, administration suite, and special education resource rooms. At the back of the building is a covered open air outdoor classroom with a landscape courtyard. Circulation has been improved in the, oh, did you wanna bring that up too, Emily? Okay, sorry, <laughs> thank you. 
Um, circulation has been improved in the drop off and pickup area on the west so that more cars can stack on site, reducing potential, potential vehicular stacking on 52nd Street that currently occurs. Outdoor play areas consist of pervious and impervious surface and sidewalks create pedestrian connections throughout the site, including a gate to water Waterworks Park with a locking mechanism. Stormwater is adequately controlled via detention basins and a new stormwater pipe and inlets to capture projected increased runoff to mitigate downstream impacts. Landscaping will consist of species native to Northeast Kansas. And this project will also be LEED certified. The project team anticipates this would be a LEED silver building. Project team conducted extensive public engagement and outreach, which consisted of six stakeholder meetings to gain input from teachers, parents, and steering teams from October 2021 to January 2022. And in July, a neighborhood meeting was held for all area residents. The team received positive feedback at these meetings, which helped drive the programming, design, and material specifications. Improvements conform with the, munis uh, the Mission Municipal Code for setbacks, height, landscaping, screening, parking, and design guidelines for R1, uh, with the um, exception for schools. This redevelopment also conforms with the comprehensive plan. Planning Commission unanimous, unanimously recommended approval of the preliminary de development plan at the July 25th hearing and the condition um, with the conditions that on street parking, lighting and landscaping would be maintained in perpetuity by the school district. Signed permit applications will be submitted prior to construction and there will be a maintenance agreement for um, all site improvements as well with this one. And I can take questions, but we also have BHC here um, in site design studio and someone from the school district. So. That's all I have for that one. Okay. Did you want to also present on the plat or? I can do up? that now if you'd like. Yeah, let's, go straight let's into it. Let's do that and then we can have questions on both. Okay. Um, case 2218 is the plat. Um, this is the prelim preliminary and final plat you'll hear today. There's a dedication of right away. Um, the property is currently not platted, so staff requested a plat to be submitted with the preliminary development plan. Existing structure sits on a large parcel that will be combined with a smaller parcel to the southeast, which is also owned by the school district. Uh, there's a dedicated 25 foot right of way along 52nd Street owned or 52nd Street that becomes part of the larger 50 foot right of way of the street. And it includes the proposed on street parking and the pre preliminary de development plan. There's also an abandoned 40 foot right of way running along the southern border of the parcel where the current building was erected that contains overhead electrical utilities. Um, and the eastern portion of the lot contains Johnson County Water District easement and a Kansas City Power and Light easement. The school district has agreed to maintain site improvements um, with that maintenance agreement, um, which will be signed prior to construction. All the requirements in the mun mission municipal code for preliminary and final plats have been met with the plat proposal and the planning commission unanimously recommended approval of the plat at the July 25th hearing. Great, thank you, Carrie. Um First, we'll ask, is there any member of the public who would like to comment on the Rushton Planner plot? Seeing none, we'd open up for council questions or discussion. Yes, Debbie. Just a comment. I want to extend an appreciation to former Mayor Ron Appletoft and current Mayor Solly Flora for being instrumental in working with the school board and the district as a whole to get this project underway. Rushton was not one of the first ones mentioned to have a rebuild and the mayors work very diligently with the school district and the board to ensure that our local school got a the attention it deserved and gets a new rebuild. So thank you. Yes, and thank you for serving on the committee, Debbie. <laughs> All right, uh, seeing no other questions or comments, I would entertain a motion on the preliminary development plan. Mayor, I move the city council approve the preliminary development plan for construction of a new Rushton Elementary School at 6001 West 52nd Street, Planning Commission case number 2217. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Robin, please call for the roll. Fulton House? Aye. Josie? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Kring? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Aye. All right, and now I would entertain a motion on the preliminary and final plat. Mayor, I move that the city council approve the preliminary and final plats of Rushton Elementary School within Mission, Johnson County, 
Kansas PC case number 22-18, including the acceptance of the right of way. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. House. Aye. Chosey. Aye. Thomas. Yes. Kring. Aye. Davis. Aye. Inman. Aye. Loudon. Aye. Ryard. Aye. All ayes. All right. Thank you. We will now move into our committee reports. Council Member Boltinghouse, will you please provide a report from the Finance and Administration Committee? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. The Finance and Administration Committee met on August 3rd and considered two items the meeting minutes. Ordinance transferring telecommunications franchise from Consolidated Communications Enterprise Services, Inc. to Ever, Everfast Fiber Networks, LLC, and Consolidated Fire District number two special event permit for street solicitation were approved earlier this evening under the consent agenda. There are three additional items for consideration on the regular agenda tonight. Item 7A is a resolution calling a public hearing for Mission Gateway Fifth Amended Tax Increment Financing TIF Redevelopment Plan. The gateway developer has filed a fifth amended tax increment financing redevelopment plan with the city clerk, which triggers the need to schedule a public hearing to consider the plan in accordance with state statutes. State law requires that the city council pass a resolution officially calling a public hearing to, to consider the redevelopment project plan. This resolution must be passed no less than 30 days and not more than 70 days prior to the date of the hearing. In order to comply with statutory requirements and to keep all issues related to the gateway special uh, scheduled for one agenda, a special city council meeting has been called for 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, September 28, 2022, for the public hearing. The resolution does not commit the city to any other action besides scheduling the hearing and providing the required notice. It is anticipated that the city council will consider the gateway fifth amended TIF redevelopment project plan as well as a community improvement district petition and a development agreement at that same city council meeting. Mayor, I move the city council approve a resolution calling the public hearing for the Mission Gateway Fifth Amended Tax Increment Financing TIF Redevelopment Project Plan for Wednesday, September 28, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the Powell Community Center. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. I would first get, ask if there's any member of the public who's here to comment on this action item tonight. Please raise your hand. Seeing none, we will open it up for council discussion. Yes, council member Thomas. I just wanted to remind the public that this item is purely administrative and that we all look forward to a public discussion and public hearing in the coming months. All right, any further comments or questions on this action item at this time? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Bolton House? Aye. Chosey? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Crane? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. All eyes. Item 7B is a resolution calling a public hearing for the Gateway Community Improvement District, also known as a CID. The Gateway developer has submitted a new Community Improvement District petition associated with the current project proposal. This would replace the existing 1% CID district with a new 2% CID district that would begin on January 1st, 2024. State statute requires that the City Council pass a resolution giving notice of the intent to consider the petition and setting the date and time for a public hearing. The resolution under consideration officially sets the public hearing on the 2022 Mission Gateway Community Improvement District for a special city council meeting scheduled for Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the Powell Community Center, 6200 Martway, Mission, Kansas, 66202. The resolution does not commit the city council to any action except scheduling the public hearing and providing the required notice. Mayor, I move the city council approve a resolution calling a public hearing for the 2022 Mission Gateway Community Improvement District for Wednesday, September 28th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. at the Powell Community Center. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any public comment on this item? Seeing no hands, I'd open it up to council discussion. Any comments or questions on this item? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Tin House? Aye. Josie? Aye. Thomas? Yes. 
Kring? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Malais? Item 7C this evening is a resolution for city-sponsored festival event. The city is required to pass a resolution designating specific city-sponsored festival events where alcohol may be consumed. This resolution includes the concert in the park at Broadmoor Park scheduled for Friday, September 22nd, 2022. September 2nd, 2022. Mayor, I move the city council approve the resolution designating the concert in the park on Friday, September 2nd, 2022 from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Broadmoor Park at a, as a city-sponsored festival event. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Bolting House? Aye. Josie? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Crane? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Aye. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. Allies? That concludes my report, Mayor. All right, thank you. Council Member Chosey, will you please provide a report from the Community Development Committee? Yes, thank you, Mayor. The Community Development Committee also met on August 3rd and considered three items. The meeting minutes, approval of the preliminary plat of Holly Heights located at the southwest corner of West 58th Street and Knoll Avenue, approval of a preliminary development plan with stipulations for the construction of a new Rushton Elementary School and the approval of the preliminary and final plats of Rushton Elementary School and acceptance of right of way at 6001 West 52nd Street were approved earlier on tonight's agenda. There are no items for consideration on the regular agenda tonight. Mayor, just a uh, both actually, because I'm yes. just a quick point of clarification. I just caught it listening to you. So Holly Heights was not actually on your agenda this evening. There's some issues that we're resolving. So um, it will be coming forward next month for you. Okay. It, it went to the planning commission. It was scheduled to come forward got slowed down in between. So our, my apologies, I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Does that- Yes, that report? concludes my report. Great, thank you. Um, next, we would move into unfinished business, but we do not have any unfinished business on our agenda this evening. Uh, we do have one new business item for consideration tonight. Ms. Smith, will you please update us on this item? Yes, thank you. And I was sitting here looking for the action item in my packet and realized I don't think we put it in your packets on Friday. So. Um, we had a situation, so I think everybody's familiar with in the 2022 Street Preservation Program that as we were doing the work on Outlook, we were experiencing some significant issues with um, the subgrade and the inability to get the subgrade dried out to a point where it was appropriate, where we could get the appropriate compaction to begin paving. So we gave it, I think, about three weeks <laughs> to try to dry out. Um, we couldn't really uh, solve for that problem. We put down some additional rock. Uh, and then ultimately we came back and used some geogrid material to get that stabilized. And within a short period of time after the geogrid was installed, we were able to move forward with paving. The contractor after working on Outlook moved to Reeds was the next street on the list. Um, they milled the street and removed all of that. I think in the kind of the August 5th on a Friday and came back and did some work on Monday. And they started seeing a lot of the same issues that they were experiencing on the outlook. So heaving um, of the subgrade and just moisture coming up through, which was a little bit, um, I think had everyone scratching their heads a little bit. I think we thought on outlook, it was the result primarily of stormwater runoff that was coming down that street. So we don't know if they're underground springs, if there are a variety of other things. And so as we have said for quite some time, moving into these full depth reconstructions, it's going to be like Christmas every time we open up the street. We never know what's going to be inside. Um, this one, um, I'm not sure was a gift, but um, based on the experience that we had on Outlook, um, the contractor didn't feel, they, they asked the city um, not to put down or they didn't want to proceed with putting down the additional aggregate material like had been done on Outlook. That didn't work and it took, it extended that project by that three week time frame. And so um, our public works director Celia Duran and public works superintendent Brent Morton uh, worked with the contractor and the recommendation was to install the geo grid. The, the other thing about reads then is if we waited for an extended period of time and not put the aggregate down, residents wouldn't have had access to driveways. We were concerned with the rain that in particular we experienced yesterday. 
So I authorized, after speaking with the mayor, um, that they proceed to install the geogrid on that project to allow that to move forward um, and not create any additional issues uh, in delaying that project any further. And so um, we're looking um, uh, for ratification of that expenditure, which I, th I don't have that number committed to memory, Emily, but I think it's 79,000. Okay, there you go. Um, for the geogrid. One of the things that we've talked about, um, and so there's a resolution, it would be a resolution uh, ratifying that expense. Um, this is, again, a situation. So one of the things that we did, uh, or that we brought in a third party testing firm that came in and actually kind of put rods in various locations along reads to try to determine the extent of the, the issue. And I believe in five of the seven spots, Yep, five of the seven spots. Um, it was soft enough that, you know, wasn't we determined it wasn't really isolated to a smaller area. There's no, as I said, going forward, there's no great way to test for that until we get the street, you know, peeled back. So we'll be looking at as we continue to work on refining and building out the street preservation program. We're looking at some ideas and we'll come back with some suggestions in next year to say, how do we kind of create some contingencies um, to plan for this? Obviously, we want to stretch those street dollars as far as we can. So you don't want to tie up too much unnecessarily in a contingency fund, but we also want to be able to make decisions in a very timely manner once you get the street opened up. So I'd be happy to answer any questions and I know uh, Mr. Morton would as well. Yeah, and I just wanted to make one note about the emergency nature when Laura and Celia and I discussed this, as Laura mentioned, there were concerns about rain. So, you know, the, the street had been removed and it was just dirt there. And so Celia had strong concerns that if we were to get a rain event, it might make houses inaccessible, et cetera. And so we wanted to avoid that situation. Any comments or questions for Laura? I would entertain entertain a motion. Mayor, I move the city council approve a resolution ratifying the emergency expenditure with Miles Excavating Inc. to stabilize unstable soils on Reeds Road, 49th Street to West 50th Terrace as part of the 2022 Street Preservation Project in an amount not to exceed $79,771.40. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Robin, please call the roll. Bolting House? Aye. Chosey? Aye. Thomas? Yes. Kring? Aye. Davis? Aye. Inman? Yes. Loudon? Aye. Ryard? Aye. All eyes. All right, there being uh, no further business items for consideration, we'll, we'll move into comments from our city council. This is an opportunity for comments from any of our council members. Does anyone on the council have something they'd like to share this week? Yes, Mary. I just wanted to uh, reiterate, I guess, I think we all really enjoyed Monday's groundbreaking at Mohawk. Um, it's been really cool to, I was on PRT when we first started seeing those designs come through and to finally see it coming <laughs> to reality is just really beautiful. So thank you again, Penn, for all of the work that you've done securing grant money and all of the work that everybody else has done to make it happen. So it was just a really cool thing to be a part of. So thank you. All right, any other comments from council? Seeing none, we will move into our council committee liaison reports. These reports allow the entire governing body to stay up to date with the various activities of our boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, first, we'll have council members Kring and Thomas for the Sustainability Commission. Uh, just a reminder that September 17th, which is a Saturday, we, they will, the city will hold an environmental fair sponsored by the Sustainability Commission. It will be here at the community center from 9 to 12. We have several vendors and several different booths with a bunch of different environmental pieces and information that should help you get more engaged in what we're doing on the sustainability front. But I think we're encouraging people to come out and enjoy that environmental fair. Yes, and that happens to be the same day as the Mission Sidewalk Sale, too. So you can come on out and hit hit one and then go to the other. It'll be great. And I'll just I'll just add on to Councilmember Kring's comments. Um, the Sustainability Commission recently did a market tent night uh, down at the Mission Market and had lots of good 
um, engagement. And then in our last meeting, we reviewed the climate task force recommendations as well as the recent development scorecards. Great, thank you. Uh, next, we will move into Council Members Loudon and Ryherd for the Parks, Recreation and Tree Commission. So yeah, we had a full meeting. Uh, Laura came to visit and explained budgetary processes, which was perfect because she is our subject matter expert on that and answered a lot of questions. Um, I know that the PRT had on their mind. Um, so that was great. And then we had Jenna um, kind of present on some numbers from the MFAC um, and membership numbers were up this year, which was good to see. Um, obviously I already talked about Mohawk groundbreaking, um, but we kind of chatted about that and um, actual work will begin uh, midway through September. Um, and then um, ballots, I don't think we'll have another council meeting before ballots sell out, yeah, officially. Okay, sure, yes, but um, I guess from a, from a city council perspective, um, ballots um, for the mail-in ballots for the um, park sales renewal will go out September 1st, probably start seeing those September 2nd. So just be on the lookout for those. And anything else? Uh, we went on a little excursion yeah. to visibly look at parks. We started at uh, Broadmoor and walked around the, the path and saw places where it really needs to be upgraded. Um, we went to Streamway Park and talked about some of the proposals of uh, improvements there and possibly Dog Park. Um, we then went to Waterworks Park and uh, talked about some things that had been updated and uh, the fact that both Penn and um, Taylor, thank you, um, have been certified to do playground inspections. And, um, and so it was very informative to learn about the things that have been going on in our parks uh, already and talk about plans for the future. Oh, we should also say that yard signs are available for anyone who wants to have one to promote the uh, sales tech for the Parks and Rec. All right, um, next we'll hear an update from Council Member Boltinghouse on the Mission Magazine editorial board. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Just a quick update this time. Our committee did not meet this previous month, but the, mission, uh, the next issue is progressing nicely and you can expect it to hit mailboxes in another month or so. Great, and finally, we have Council Member Chosi with the Family Adoption Committee. Thank you, Mayor. The Family Adoption Committee met on uh, July 27th in another preparatory meeting. Um, we, let's see, we discussed um, a number of issues related to food donations and some challenges that we might be facing with availability and quantity from some of our food suppliers, as well as um, storage, cold storage for food, um, and how we might solve some of those challenges. Um, donation flyers are going out, as well as letter, uh, letters to previous donors and campaigns in, on social media, the magazine, um, local businesses, um, looking for some of those businesses to support uh, the, the family adoption effort again. Um, we are still uh, discussing a partnership with Smiling Hearts to help just kind of um, bolster the efforts of both groups and maybe um, transform some of our efforts into a more uh, year round uh, effort to help families in the area. Um, I think that about covers it. We are meeting again tomorrow morning, um, and I think we'll begin starting some more of the actual work and, and wrap up some of the planning and, and start moving into the season. So thank you. That, that's the end of my report. Great. Uh, next up will be my report. I do not have any appointments or other items to add this evening, um, so we'll move into our city administrator's report. Uh, Laura, do you have any items you'd like to share with council tonight? I do, and I have a kind of a long list, so I'm sorry, but I promise that we won't be here late. Um, we didn't have any special presentations tonight, but there were a couple of things I did want to share with you all um, that have been circulating internally, uh, and we don't often in this public setting get a chance to kind of toot the horn of, of some of the staff members that you all don't see regularly. Uh, and I know um, that we got just this last week, a bit of really good news on our workers' compensation program. Um, and I'm just gonna read, read this to you, it's, it's short, but it kind of, so Emily and our HR um, apparel and benefits specialist, Kathy Stratman met with uh, folks from Thomas McGee to review a scorecard that we do with Carrot annually to kind of look at our efforts in terms of loss control and, uh, and safety. And we got a report that our overall score has improved 
in both historic severity and historic loss ratio, we are scoring below that of all of the other members in the, the carrot pool. Um, our historic frequency rate, which is the number of incidents that are reported, is still a bit higher than the other members. Um, but that tells us that we're consistently reporting all of the injuries that we have and that our process is working very well. So um, in 2020, we saw a significant drop in total claims and loss ratio from the two prior years. We had a slight increase in 2021, but so far in 2022, we're trending below 2020. Um, and next year, it's a rolling average of data. Next year, 2018, which was, I think, not a great claims year for us, will drop off of those historical uh, reporting, and that will improve our ranking overall among our municipalities in the group. So what that does, the work there um, results in um, impacts the premiums, it gives us premium savings. We also, through the scorecard process and a, a number of other areas for safety and control, get a, a reduction in that premium. So just wanted to share that. I know sometimes I have questions from you all about the work that we do around safety and loss control. It is important, and I know Kathy has really revived uh, the safety committee and um, they're doing, doing a great job. So it has, it's, you know, we spend upwards of $125,000, $140,000 each year on work comp premium. So it's a real expense in our budget and any, um, anything that we can do to um, save money is great. The other great news is I think you all were aware that um, we had submitted a planning sustainable places grant application uh, to Mark for a project development grant for redevelopment of really along the Rock Creek Trail and the Rock, Rock Creek Channel. And um, our planner, Carrie Canaller, did a great job in kind of spearheading all of that. We, I think I reported that we got a very favorable preliminary score, but there was a meeting last Friday to discuss that and um, we had our proposal accepted unanimously by the committee. And even better news is that there was more funding available for projects on the Kansas side than there were grant applications. And so we have the opportunity to go back and potentially ask uh, for some additional funds for either maybe something new or maybe expanding that. So I know that took a lot of, that was about $100,000 that we had asked for. Um, so we'll be able to, to have that and move forward. And then that will position us to be able to go back in future planning, sustainable places, application processes for actual implementation dollars. So lots of great work on the part of our staff. So thank you. Um, park sales tax. So Mohawk, again, thank you. The Mohawk Park was a lot of fun. Um, you know, we ha we've never done a park groundbreaking on anything like that. So we, you know, we look forward to hoping to be able to continue that uh, in, in our parks for the future and appreciate your thanks to staff, but also thank you to you all um, for making it a priority to kickstart those improvements um, and for increasing the funding available to get us as far as we can into this phase one. I think those will be really meaningful and significant visual and you know, just quality of life improvements um, for the users of that park. So we're excited to get that kicked off. I think as we mentioned at the groundbreaking sands, construction expects to mobilize in about September 15th and the project will wrap up um, in March of 2023. Uh, the, we launched last week the website, the landing page for the Parks and Recreation Sales Tax. The video will hit the website um, before the end of this week, which we're thrilled to be able to kind of share that and start getting the word out. Uh, we sent the mailer. So we're following, I think we've talked about this, we're following a similar communications roadmap as we had with the Paving the Way campaign. Um, we have a trifold mailer that will be going to homes. Um, it's off at the printer and scheduled to hit right about the same time as mail ballots arrive. So people can hopefully sit down and look at those together and we'll just continue to build out the website. Um, we'll be doing social media posts, testimonials, um, and just generally kind of getting the word out. Uh, we'll, and we'll share some key dates. Um, one of which is the last day for voter registration for this election will be August 30th. And so we'll really um, promote that. Um, you may have seen if you're a social media follower that we're having cone with a cop. 
uh, coming up on August 30th at Baskin Robbins at 6 p.m. So an opportunity kind of back to school for our police officers to be out and just interact with kids and their families. So please come join us if you're available. Um, we had a, a really good meeting workshop with our stakeholder group this afternoon and pros consulting on the community center feasibility study. Um, and we'll be looking to uh, really round out the recommendations and bring those forward and get a work session scheduled with you all um, here in the very near future. And then my last thing really, I, unless anybody has questions on the July financials, I think they were pretty straightforward. No, no surprises there. We're done paying back. This was our last month and paying back our use tax receipts. The good news there is um, use tax <laughs> receipts overall. Uh, this month were like really, really high. Um, $156,000 of which we still owed about 70. But if they trend and continue at that level through the end of the year, uh, we may not have to, you know, seen that lot, same loss that we were expecting. So that's good news. And so I did just want to recap in close. Um, we do have a budget work session next Wednesday at 630. Um, where we'll kind of present our first recommended budget, all the parts and pieces coming together. The second budget work session and community dialogue on Wednesday, August 31st. Then we have a special city council meeting on September 7th at 6 p.m. Um, for the budget public hearings because our regular meeting dates didn't fall between the statutorily required dates of August 20th and September 20th. So we will have that, hold the public hearings. The public hearing notices will be published next Tuesday in the legal record. Um, then we will move into, so we'll push our committee meetings back. What we'll advertise the committee meetings as uh, seven or immediately following the special city council meeting. So if it doesn't, if, if we don't have a lot of public, if we don't have a lot of discussion at that meeting at six, we'll be able to just roll then right into the committee meetings at 6.30. And then the committee meetings, we will have several of the other, you know, that's really kind of our first in-depth discussion about things that are moving forward with Gateway along with a variety of other regular agenda items. Um, then we'll have another work session on the Gateway on September 14th. Then we'll have a regular city council meeting on the 21st and a special city council meeting on the 28th. So. I don't think there's a Wednesday between now and maybe the end of the year that we probably won't all be hanging out together. Uh, I think that's all I have this evening. Okay, great. Any questions for Laura on our busy schedule? <laughs> Seeing none, um, we would move into executive session. We do not have a need for an executive session this evening. So before we adjourn tonight, I just want to share with the public that the video from this meeting will be available through a link on our website at missionks.org. There being no further business tonight, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Absolutely. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.